السلام علیکم خواتین و حضرات وسیم احسن ویلکمس یو ٹو لیکچر نمبر فورٹی آف برانڈ مینجمنٹ ایم کے ٹی سکس ٹو فور ایٹ دی ورچوئل یونیورسٹی آف پاکستان وی آر کورنگ دی ایریا آف میجرنگ دا برانڈس پرفارمنس آئی اسٹارٹ اٹ ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ ٹو گیدر دس ٹاپک ان دا پریویس لیکچر اینڈ اگر ایم گوئنگ ٹو پک اپ تھنگس ویر آئی لیفٹ یو ول ریکال دیٹ I emphasized on the need for having some strategic measures along with uh, the financial measures which every company always has. And uh, those measures are sales, revenues, the returns on sales, returns on investments, and so on and so forth. And those are the numbers which really give you a very clear picture of uh, where the company stands. But then at the same time, we need to have the certain measures which are the very strategic in nature. Strategic in the sense that uh, those really stem from all those uh, strategies and uh, those factors which cause the financial results companies achieve. So therefore, there's a need uh, for those strategic factors to be measured in order to make sure that they really supplement the results that we see in terms of financials. And also, you will recall that uh, I emphasized on the need for this kind of measurement because we like to preempt so many different factors that uh, could have been negative and uh, that may cause drastic changes in terms of the financial results. So in order to make sure that uh, these strategies that we employed and we are in the process of uh, executing uh, are uh, just about the right strategies and the execution in particular is uh, on the right path. And uh, if there are any changes or uh, corrective actions desired, we take those immediately at the time they occur and uh, make sure that um, the path toward achievement of uh, the financial results is free of any troubles. I talked about four different factors or dimensions that have to be the basis of uh, measuring the strategic changes and those are um, differentiation, the relevance, esteem and knowledge. And you will also recall that uh, there are so many different variables or uh, offshoot to get all these uh, get the four dimensions. Differentiation has like three, relevance has six, and um, esteem and knowledge, which I'm going to talk about, also has uh, get a couple of uh, get the variables get to themselves. And this is not to say that uh, the list is uh, limited to the number that I'm talking about. The list is uh, pretty long and uh, there are no the hard and fast rules as to the which should be or must be the variables as the divisions and subdivisions of the basic four fundamental dimensions. We need to divide these dimensions into all those strategic factors which we think are responsible to drive the growth of our brand. And therefore, those could be the same factors which also can cause some of the negative changes and therefore the any factors which are not going to be covered or which may pop into your mind as the being very relevant that you also can add those to the list of the ones that i'm talking about as long as you really can make sure that those factors the ones made part of the research model are going to lead toward accurate responses which will further help you in enhancing the, your understanding of the whole strategic and execution process. Okay, so having already talked about the two the major dimensions, the meaning uh, differentiation and uh, relevance, let's now start talking about these factors on the esteem dimension. As uh, the terminology or, or the word means, we under this measure like to measure how many of the people are there or customers are there who are consistent in terms of the buying of a brand. 
And we'd like to make sure that through this measure, how consistent those uh, the customers are. With the meaning, do they really come the back to the brand over and over again and buy it? How long they have been buying the brand? So with the, once you have uh, the positive findings uh, about the consistency uh, of your customers in terms of their uh, the buying behavior, the, you really can uh, the make projections uh, about uh, the times to come. The, you know uh, how satisfied those customers are uh, because consistent customers are loyal customers. And loyal customers uh, are the ones uh, who are going to stick to, to the brand. And they are the ones uh, who, who also are going to get into referrals. And uh, because of that, uh, the brand is going to gain uh, the new customers. So getting into projections uh, for uh, the future numbers uh, also becomes easy uh, with the help of uh, this measure. Easy in the sense that uh, you can work with uh, the projections uh, with a lot of confidence. Uh, the one more thing uh, this measure uh, lets you uh, look into is uh, those uh, the customers uh, who would have left the brand if uh, you did not have uh, the right branding strategies. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, let me explain this uh, with uh, the help of um, an illustration. If your customers uh, are responding to questions uh, which relate to your communication strategies, or uh, which relate your uh, the pricing strategies, and uh, the responses uh, the elicit things uh, which really testify the uh, accuracy of those strategies, then uh, you will know that, uh, that this particular customer really stuck to the brand uh, because of the communication you know, that is taking place. So uh, you will know that uh, the communication which uh, you uh, kicked off is effective, and uh, you are talking about um, the, uh, the right most uh, the elements of uh, the brand character and uh, the, uh, the promise and uh, the positioning, uh, in other words, which you really want to create in the minds of the customers. And as long as uh, you get uh, a testimony to that fact, your strategy or your strategies are in place. You also can uh, get a look into the pricing uh, the strategy with uh, the sense of confidence if you think that uh, many of your customers are responding very positively to uh, the, the pricing strategy. If they approve of the price, you again are very confident about uh, the whatever you have in place. And uh, that is going to give you uh, further insights into uh, the what should happen in future times. You also can look into another area which is if customers are so consistent and they are sticking with your brand, why is it that they are sticking with this brand? Like is it because of the pricing strategy? Is it because of the communication strategy? Or is it because of the product features, meaning the benefits? And uh, if you think there are uh, the certain benefits which uh, uh, really are very compatible with uh, the list of drivers for the loyalty factor, then uh, you can talk about those drivers. And uh, depending upon their importance, like I said earlier, uh, you can uh, design your questionnaire accordingly. I mean, if you think that uh, the performance factor uh, in terms of uh, your product is uh, right on top and uh, it should be on top, uh, you should go out to test that. And uh, if the test is uh, positive, that is uh, a testimony to the fact that uh, the strategy is just about the right strategy. So you can look into this fact from so many different angles just to make sure that why is it that your customers are staying loyal to the brand and why they are sticking to the brand. Another thing you, know, you should look into, I mean another question that you should ask your respondents should be what competitive brands could they considered before making the final decision of buying your brand yet another time because they are consistent because they are loyal so they are buying your brand again and again so 
what is it that uh, really makes your customers uh, gonna buy your brand in preference to uh, the competition? What are the competitive brands uh, which they considered uh, before making the final decision of buying your brand? So in other words, uh, what are the competitive brands uh, which they in a way rejected? And uh, what are the factors uh, which are so positive uh, about uh, your brand that really uh, makes them buy it again and again? So in other words, not only that, uh, you really can determine uh, all those factors uh, relating the benefits uh, which uh, your brand offers, you also uh, will know the competitive brands that um, entered the decision set of your uh, the customers. And uh, that I think is uh, something very important to know uh, because that way you really can um, determine how to gauge the, your brand in relation to competition and how your brand, in other words, stacks up against competition. All the questions that uh, you ask your respondents uh, are going to uh, give you answers which uh, will testify the accuracy of your strategies. And in case uh, the answers uh, do not testify your uh, strategies being right, then of course there's a gap. And uh, it is because of that particular uh, factor that you get into uh, this kind of measurement just to make sure that uh, everything that is taking place is taking place in the right most manner and fashion. And if there are um, corrections or adjustments that to be made, you make those. Another uh, the variable uh, on this uh, dimension of uh, the esteem is uh, what you may call price premium. Uh, the price premium being uh, the one of the strategic elements of uh, the whole uh, the branding process also becomes uh, the, an important variable uh, which you have to uh, the measure and test. So this measure uh, the lets you determine uh, the why uh, the, your customers uh, are willing to uh, the pay you a premium in comparison with uh, the other brands or other products. Not only the why they are willing to pay premium, it also lets you look into what should be the right premium. In case you are not charging the right price, you still have a chance to make adjustments and you can move the price upwards. Moving the price downwards generally is not a good decision, but here we are talking basically in the context of price premium and uh, the better margins. So uh, by asking uh, your uh, customers uh, right questions uh, about the, the pricing strategy in particular, uh, you really can uh, lead them to uh, give you answers uh, which are based on uh, objectivity and uh, the honesty so that uh, you really can gauge the, the efficacy of uh, your pricing strategy. You compare uh, the, your brand against uh, the competition and uh, again, you know, can uh, stack it up uh, the, in relation to the pricing patterns in uh, the Vogue uh, the, in the marketplace. And uh, the, any adjustments uh, which you think uh, have got to be made should be made. So this uh, the measurement uh, lets you increase the price uh, if you think an increase uh, should come forward. and uh, it also lets you feel very confident if uh, the price premium charged by you is just about the right premium and uh, you maintain that price. So uh, the pricing uh, being a uh, very important strategic factor, uh, you've got to uh, measure this and uh, this uh, measurement uh, will lead toward uh, some very convincing uh, answers uh, whether you have the right margins to yourselves or not. And uh, the name of the game is uh, going to be margins because uh, the margins are going to lead to net profitability and so on and so forth. So the whole uh, the branding effort is uh, the geared toward that and uh, the pricing is uh, one of the prime, prime drivers uh, of all those um, financial elements. Another uh, variable on uh, the dimension of uh, esteem is uh, the lifetime the value of your customers. This sounds very interesting uh, and uh, this really is an interesting measure 
to what extent this really gives you the very incisive insights is uh, something that remains to be seen. Uh, but basically, this measure the deals with uh, working out the lifetime, the worth of your customers and how you work that out. Well, it is based upon the loyalty and uh, consistency of your customers in relation to their the buying behavior. What you do is uh, you work with uh, a certain the body of your customers, meaning in terms of number, and uh, you multiply that with uh, the, the value of the brand or the, the, the price that you charge, and then multiply that with uh, the number of times with which customers are going to buy that brand over and over again and come up with uh, a certain value with which you think is going to be the average value or an average value with a for an average customer in relation to purchase of your brand. This is uh, an uh, interesting uh, measure uh, which uh, may give you uh, certain uh, leads and certain insights into the, uh, the branding process but uh, this may not be as significant as uh, the one I just talked about in relation to pricing. Let us now get on to the fourth dimension which deals with uh, the knowledge. And uh, you are not to lose sight of the fact that uh, the dimensions I'm talking about today form the construct number two, which is about uh, the brand's stature. I just took the finish talking about esteem and uh, now I'm getting on to the knowledge dimension. And uh, the very first variable of the knowledge dimension is about uh, the positioning. Positioning the pops up every now and then and uh, here and there. And uh, the fact is that the whole game of uh, the branding is all about positioning. And positioning uh, being a function of uh, the segmentation and uh, the differentiation, all the marketing strategies uh, the drive out of the concept of uh, the positioning or the positioning strategy. And therefore, it is of the utmost importance that we go for this measure. Whether the positioning that we have tried to create for our customers, in other words, the position that we are wanting to occupy into the minds of our customers, is it the one which is being perceived so by the customers? Meaning, the message that we are conveying does that, does that have uh, similarities with uh, the way they perceive it? Because uh, if there are any gaps, it means that uh, the, the positioning of uh, the brand is not 100% uh, correct. So in other words, the, any communication that takes place uh, from the company side and is intended uh, for your customers or consumers, it has to be on the same wavelength. And there must not be any gaps. If there are no gaps, that really is a testimony to the fact that uh, the communication is on the same wavelength. The, the strategy is just about right. And uh, the message that you are delivering is being received exactly like that by your customers. And uh, therefore, the strategy is working to leverage your brand. Another uh, important uh, factor which makes measuring this strategy the very important is the strategies of segmentation and differentiation. And you will recall that the strategies of segmentation and differentiation really come to life with the help of the positioning. So therefore, it is of utmost importance that we measure our positioning strategy because that really is going to give us a lot of confidence into whatever we are doing to achieve all the strategic goals. To what extent your customers really understand your positioning and then own it can be explained with the help of one example. And let me give you this example for the sake of clarity. The position has got to be so clear in the minds of the consumers that they should start owning it. Now, when I say they should start owning it, it doesn't really mean that your customers will tell you that this is the position that you created and we own it. No. It is that your customers will always think of your brand 
as the first brand which come to their which will come to their minds and they will not think of any other brand and even if they think of other brands which uh, they may for the the part of their uh, decision set the like i referred to in the previous uh, the variable then uh, at least uh, you have the confidence that uh, all those brands could were rejected and uh, the your positioning it happens to be so strong that uh, the final decision that was taken in favor of your brand okay get back to the example you have got uh, the position with your brand uh, from the taste and quality platform so in other words uh, what you are uh, the communicating to the, your uh, the target market is that uh, the quality of your brand is uh, the second to none and uh, the taste is uh, really uh, very good meaning it's full of taste and uh, the naturally uh, you would like your customers to perceive uh, your brand in those terms now what happens uh, if uh, the customers could uh, start uh, perceiving your brand as a brand uh, which is very price friendly if there is a finding then uh, there is something wrong with uh, the way that you're trying to position your brand maybe the platform of positioning is right but the communication strategy is not right there has to be something you know the which uh, has generated this kind of a feeling in the minds of your consumers that uh, they look upon your brand or whenever they think of your brand they think of your brand in terms of it being very price friendly now this is not the position you like to create in the minds of your consumers you never intended that uh, the, your customers should ever think in terms of the pricing because uh, you have uh, created for them something the full of quality and full of taste the which means it must command a premium price and if uh, the customers could have a position which is contrary to the concept of your uh, the positioning then uh, it is going to be awfully difficult for you to dislodge uh, that position from their minds and uh, go for the price increase because uh, they have this perception that uh, the price of this brand is uh, they're never going to be out of uh, their uh, range of perception you have to control the damage then and there and uh, they must make sure that uh, you never run into that kind of a constraint it really is a constraint because uh, you cannot go for the price increase uh, in other words uh, since the positioning has uh, a lot to do with uh, communication and it comes to life only because of communication there has to be something wrong with uh, the way you are communicating the the brand's personality or the brand's promise with your customers and therefore whatever is required to the take the corrective action you've got to take that and make sure that uh, your positioning strategy is get back on track and in case uh, there is no gap of uh, their perception meaning customers perception the way that the word was intended the while we created the position uh, then everything is fine and uh, the, your uh, positioning strategy uh, stands testified that uh, the, it is uh, the right strategy there is um, a, a very strong uh, relationship between uh, the good quality of any brand and uh, the price uh, premium that you charge and uh, therefore uh, you've got to make sure that uh, the positioning which is created from the, the standpoint of uh, the quality does get registered in the same way as it was intended and uh, you gain the benefits of uh, the price premiums and uh, the better margins and uh, the better profitability not only that you gain the customers who are uh, who become very consistent uh, because of a very consistent positioning of the brand and because of the benefits that you're offering and also because of the fact that uh, the benefits that you're offering you have positioned those so beautifully and you're communicating those to your customers so effectively that uh, they're coming back to the brand again and again so what here is the, the most important and fundamental factor is the way that you design your questionnaire you've got to ask the right questions to your customers so that uh, you get the, the right most 
and the honest most answers in relation to your positioning. That is the lesson here. And uh, it goes without saying that the complete understanding on the part of your customers is of the utmost importance. And that is what you have to test and measure that they do have that level of the understanding, meaning complete the 100% understanding. And they must own the position so that they become consistent and loyal customers and so that they get into referrals and bring more and more customers. The last took the variable on um, the four dimensions, or for that matter, the, the second took the variable on the dimension of knowledge the after positioning is the referral index. This in itself can be a measure, although I talked about the referrals a lot of times in relation to positioning and also in relation to customer loyalty test. You can get into this measure independently of customer loyalty and positioning and then determine how many customers are there or what approximately is the size of the population of those customers who really voluntarily get into the exercise of referring your brands to potential customers. Now, this is uh, a function of uh, the consistency for the brand loyalty and good positioning and acceptance of price and uh, the benefits that you're offering uh, through differentiation and so on and so forth. So uh, when it comes to the designing uh, the questionnaire in relation to referrals, uh, you've got to ask so many different questions but all those questions could have got to be very pertinent in this particular context. I mean, those questions which you already have asked in relation to other variables could may not be repeated. And if uh, there is a dire need to repeat any questions, uh, there, there has to be a strong logic and rationale for that. The objective still remains that uh, you are out there in the market to testify that uh, all the strategic factors which are responsible for your brand growth and for your brands leveraging are fully in place and they are working very effectively in coordination with each other and in the close relationship with each other so that you really can derive the optimal level of leveraging. That basically is the lesson of measuring your brand. Now, before I end discussion on these variables, let me tell you that the list of the variables could be very long, and I did point out this factor at the start of my lecture. The list has got to be in relation to your particular situation and circumstances. And the list does not really mean that you have to measure your brand on all the variables that you can think of. This is very important because you have to look at the resource constraint. You do not have all the time in the world to get into an exercise which may take time at the cost of other strategic moves. So therefore, what is very important to remember in relation to these variables is that uh, you should pick up those uh, variables, maybe just four or maybe just six, or at the most eight, uh, I would say, which really can uh, give you the insights uh, with confidence that uh, whatever you're doing is um, right and you are on the right path. And uh, if there are any corrections uh, to be made, those uh, should be made in a uh, well-structured strategic way. Having uh, talked about uh, all that, uh, I would like uh, now to uh, summarize the, the benefits of uh, these variables in uh, relation to the dimensions from where they stem. It is very important to go for these measures, whether you go for just about four measures or six measures or eight measures, um, say the once in a year, it is very important to undertake these measures and you know the importance why. Let me talk about that also as uh, the part of the summary. But uh, what is very important to keep in mind is 
that uh, in adversity, you really start realizing that uh, the importance of uh, these strategic factors is of paramount importance. Now, just look at this from uh, the standpoint of uh, not getting into this kind of an exercise. What happens is, um, all of a sudden, the sales start slipping and uh, your share of the market start eroding and uh, you get into the kind of a situation which is uh, a reflection of total desperation and uh, all you do at that time is to make some desperate decisions to bring your brand back on track. And it is at that moment that you start realizing the importance of measuring these strategic factors. I wish I had undertaken certain strategic measures. And if I had undertaken those measures, I would have known what has gone wrong and what really has caused this negative or the situation to surface. Another uh, the set of circumstances under which uh, the importance of uh, the measurement makes itself felt is uh, the situation which may not be very adverse, but which definitely is the one under which you find your brand not really fully exploiting its potential. The meaning that uh, you start realizing that the brand is moving all right, but the brand is not really moving the way it should have. The meaning there still is a lot of spark and still is a lot of energy which still needs to be exploited in terms of uh, the movement of this brand. And um, you get into the measurements of all uh, these factors. I mean, not all these factors, but uh, whatever factors you think are very strategic, in relation to your own situation, meaning just about four or five or six of those, and uh, undertake uh, a market research um, project and uh, get into uh, the exercise of uh, finding out the right answers. And uh, once you have uh, found the right answers, uh, you are all set to harness the, the potential of the brand. You capitalize on the, the market situation and uh, start making the good decisions, the meaning the right decisions, and get back onto the right path. The marketing experts uh, they really emphasize on uh, the measuring uh, the, these uh, the factors because uh, they are very strongly of the view that um, it is not only the financial the measures which uh, they should uh, tell the company about uh, its performance, these uh, results have got to be supplemented with uh, the, the measures which really cause those results. So in other words, we've got to test the, the cause and effect relationship that uh, the relationship is in place and uh, that there is no short circuiting, so to say, and uh, that there is nothing you know, which may undermine that relationship, which is of so much importance. Benefits, like I pointed out, uh, what really are the benefits of uh, this approach of uh, measuring your brand's performance? Well, the foremost benefit, I would say, is that uh, you really can uh, maintain your uh, the brand's position. So much has been talked about uh, the brand's positioning that uh, the, I don't really think that I really have to shed any more light on uh, the concept. But the fact remains that uh, the, with the help of the measuring this particular factor, you really can maintain your position. And when you maintain your position, you also know when is going to be the time when you are going to bring about subtle changes in the position and what is it that you have to do in relation to all that. The second benefit is that you really can preempt the most of the damages that might be in the offing and uh, you can get into a damage control. You can get into an exercise with which um, preempts that uh, the damage. Instead of getting into the damage control exercise, the meaning once the damage has taken place, that is not a good situation. You would like to create a situation in which you are preempting that damage. Another benefit this approach uh, offers you is that you really can consolidate and further solidify the, your uh, the brand's positioning because uh, the, you know the factors which really uh, the appeal 
I mean, the benefits which really appeal to your customers and uh, you know the communication which is in place are responsible for uh, communicating that position effectively into the minds of the customers and therefore you can further consolidate that position. Either you are an expert by that point and uh, you really can solidify it. You really can, as another benefit, focus on uh, the brand's picture. So in other words, uh, the, the you make sure that uh, the, there is just no gap the, between the, the picture the, which you created in terms of the associations and the brand contract and the brand delivery and the perception and the image the, which is created in the marketplace, meaning in the minds of the consumers. Again, this is something which is uh, the, very closely related to your uh, the positioning. And uh, the, if the position is achieved, it automatically means that uh, the brand's picture is uh, just about the right picture. But uh, in relation to the concepts that uh, we have learned and in relation to these steps that we take you know, one by one in order to uh, build up the brand, we've got to be clear about this factor also that uh, this is a great benefit which uh, lets you uh, feel confident that uh, the picture that you have about uh, your brand is just about the right picture. It also offers you the benefit of uh, determining the impact of your uh, the strategies on uh, retaining your customers. Now, not only creating customers, uh, retaining customers and uh, the gaining more customers. This basically relates the accuracy of all the strategies uh, that uh, you have in place. So, in other words, uh, also uh, this relates to the positioning and uh, that is why I started talking about the benefits starting with the factor of uh, the positioning okay, because if the positioning is right then uh, the chances are that all the strategies that you could have in place as part of the overall framework are the right strategies and uh, the, your the brand is going to uh, create uh, going to maintain and gain the more customers and uh, this is the, the profile which really lets you make your customers loyal toward your brand. Another benefit which is of high value is that you really can determine whether you should go for the brand extension or you shouldn't go for extensions. The results that you generate with the help of this research or these measurements really lets you look into the extendability. So in other words, you really can determine the point where you tell yourself, well, this is the point beyond which I must not go in terms of extending the line. Because I already have created a lot of uh, the brands, meaning a lot of products with uh, so many different kinds of benefits in terms of ingredients, in terms of flavors, in terms of tastes, in terms of uh, the different sizes, uh, so on and so forth, that uh, I do not really have to uh, get into any more extensions. And uh, there also is a very strong possibility that uh, a picture out of this uh, the research model that may emerge, uh, leading you toward getting into more extensions. And uh, you may think to yourself that uh, the potential of the brand in terms of extendability is not really fulfilled and uh, therefore uh, I have to look into extending the line or extending the brand into other categories. Meaning in other words that uh, it lets you size up the uh, level of power of your brand. I mean you may find out that uh, the brand happens to be so powerful in the eyes of the, the customers that, uh, that there's no harm the getting into uh, the other categories. And of course, that is the decision that to be taken by the top management. But the fact remains that the measurement really lets you look into so many different important aspects which lay the foundation for the strategic decisions which the company is to make in order to stay a viable concern, a profitable concern. It also lets you achieve an overall picture uh, relating your uh, returns, meaning qualitative returns that you have gotten as a result of your investment into your brand. And uh, those qualitative returns are 
related with the confirmation of all the factors which I've talked about and all those factors which I have not talked about, the meaning, all those things that you have learned during the course so far. It lets you look into the brand's picture. It lets you look into the brand's contract. It lets you testify that the pricing is right or not right. To what extent we have the margin for a price increase and it lets you to look into the effectiveness of your the channels of distribution and the communication strategies and so on and so forth. It also lets you look into the organizational structure and that is something which I'm going to talk about in the next lecture because you have to have an organization which is fully compatible with a brand-based culture. The meaning that you have to have the people and you have to have practices which are very much in line with what is required to build up your brand and to leverage your brand. So therefore, these the measurements the lead to results which let you look into a host of qualitative factors which are all very strategic in nature and therefore allow you the benefit of uh, the making better decisions for leveraging of your brand. With this benefit stand the summarized, let me now the get on to the overall summary of uh, the concept that uh, I have discussed in the two lectures. Now, first of all, I would say that uh, the measuring performance of your brand is very important to uh, make sure that you are uh, managing your brand right. In other words, anything uh, which is not measured, you can say is not managed right. Still, in other words, even if you are getting your uh, financial results positively, it doesn't really mean that you really are uh, managing the brand right. In order to make sure that you really are uh, managing it right, you've got to get into uh, the certain strategic measures. And uh, those measures relate the strategic factors uh, which uh, give rise to the financial results at the end of every given period. Measurement of the financial results comes at the end of every month or at the end of every quarter or a year, but the measurement of these strategic factors may come, say, once in a year, but it has to supplement your financial results. If these factors are responsible to cause the financial results, then these factors could have to work in tandem with uh, the, the financial results. The cause and effect relationship which uh, is defined by these you know, coming together, then we've got to make sure that uh, we maintain the balance between uh, that cause and effect relationship and uh, whatever causes the results is measured once in a while so that we know that we are making the right moves or we must know that we are to make certain corrections and certain adjustments. And it is because of the, the timely action on the basis of the results from these measurements that you keep on posting good financial results. So this is the greatest lesson from you know, these lectures or study of this particular topic. This really makes you stay very alert and sensitive to bring about the tactical changes that are to be brought about in case of any gaps and any actions that require your attention. A time may come in the life of a company when financial results may nosedive because of the lapses in your strategic execution. So in other words, these measures they let you stay very alert and they let you make sure that the strategies, however beautiful they may look, they must not be left to chance. That is the main point to be remembered, that strategies they must not be left to any chances and the execution of those strategies has to be very effective and pre-planned and any corrective actions that may be required along the road have got to be taken then and there so that you can control the implications of the strategies.
and implications of these strategies are the ones that which you already have planned and uh, which you envisage and uh, therefore if you lose control of those implications it means the results which you are going to get at the, the end of the road or at the, uh, the point of destination uh, they may not be the ones uh, which you required. The destination uh, may change uh, all of a sudden in other words and that is not something uh, which you want and which you need. That's the last thing for any professionals, any uh, the managers. The strategic implications uh, of uh, the whole uh, the process of uh, the measuring performance relate to the four uh, different uh, macro dimensions and uh, those dimensions are the differentiation, relevance, esteem and knowledge. Never forget these four of the factors. Uh, whenever you look upon your uh, marketing strategies in relation to these four factors, uh, the chances are you will end up making you know, good decisions. And uh, all the variables or the offshoot uh, that uh, we have discussed uh, as measures are the divisions and subdivisions of uh, these four macro strategic factors. The divisions or the subdivisions, if you like to go into subdivisions, are also the very strategic in nature and uh, they happen to be the drivers uh, for your uh, strategies. But then at the same time, those are the ones which have to be measured in terms of your brand's performance. Because it is the measure of those factors or those variables which uh, let you determine that uh, you are on the right course. If we are not, we make adjustments and the process goes on. So much for uh, the measuring your brand's performance and uh, the, in the hope that uh, the concept to all of us is very clear, I would now like to move on to the next topic which is uh, the, about the developing uh, the brand-based culture the, because um, in order to get the results and uh, the leverage uh, the, your brand, you've got to make sure that you have to have a compatible organization. This organization is uh, not very different from uh, the traditional organization in terms of uh, the human resource and uh, the other resources. What is different is the culture that we have to develop in order to attain our results. And uh, when it comes to the developing uh, the compatible culture, I will refer to the importance of uh, the cross-cultural the working within an organization, the meaning, the involvement of people from across the functional boundaries, people from not only marketing, people from production, the people from finance, people from information technology, from supply chain, so on and so forth. So it is going to be the combination of um, a, a cohesive effort which is going to make uh, the whole uh, look greater than the sum of its parts. So that basically is uh, the message uh, for the next lecture which I'm going to deliver. Uh, Allah Hafiz until that time and I look forward to seeing you in the next lecture.